Book of by Confucius. Audiobook 30x47. These four defects arise from the difference of their minds. When a teacher knows the character of character of his mind, he can save the learner from the defect to which HP is liable. Teaching should be directed to develop that in which the pupil excels, and correct the defects to which he is prone. 15. The good singer makes men, able, to continue his notes, and, so, the good teacher make them able to carry out his ideas. His words are brief, but far-reaching, unpretentious, but deep, with few illustrations, but instructive. In this way he may bezade to perpetuate his ideas. 16. When a man of talents and virtue knows the difficulty, on the one hand, and the facility, on the other, in the attainment of learning, and knows, also, the good and the bad qualities, of his pupils, he can vary his methods of teaching. When he can vary his methods of teaching, he can be a master indeed. When he can be a teacher indeed, he can be the head, of an official department. When he can be such a head, he can be the ruler, of a state. Hence it is from the teacher indeed, that one learns to be a ruler, and the choice of a teacher demands the greatest care, as it is said in the record, the three kings and the four dynasties were what they were Bathir teachers. 17. In pursuing the course of learning, the difficulty is in securing the proper reverence for the master. When that is done, the course, which he inculcates, is regarded with honor. When that is done, the people know how to respect learning. Thus it is that there are two among his subjects whom the ruler does not treat as subjects. When one is personating, his ancestor, he does not treat him as such, nor does he treat his master as such. According to the rules of the great college, the master, though communicating anything to the Son of Heaven, did not stand with his face to the north. This was the way in which honor was done at Ahim. 18. The skillful learner, while the master seems indifferent, yet makes double the attainments of another, and in the sequel ascribes the merit, to the master. The unskillful learner, while the master is diligent with him, yet makes, only, half the attainments, of the former, and in the sequel is dissatisfied with the master. The skillful questioner is like a workman addressing himself to deal with a hard tree. First he attacks the easy parts, and then the naughty. After a long time, the pupil and master talk together, and the subject is explained. The unskillful questioner takes the opposite course. The master who skillfully waits to be questioned, may be compared to a bell when it is struck. Struck with a small hammer, it gives a small sound. Struck with a great one, it gives a great sound. But let it be struck leisurely and properly, and it gives out all the sound of which it is capable. He who is not skillful in replying to questions is the opposite of this. The Sal describes he method of making progress in learning. 19. He who gives, only, the learning supplied by his memory in conversations is not fit to be a master. Is it not necessary that he should hear the questions, of his pupils? Yes, but if they are not able to put questions, he should put subjects before them. If he do so, and then they do not show any knowledge of the subjects he may let them alone. 20. The son of a good founder is sure to learn how to make a fur robe. The son of a good maker of bows is sure to learn how to make a sieve. Those who first yoke a, young, horse place it behind, with the carriage going on in front of it. The superior man who examines these cases can by them instruct himself in, the method of, learning. 21. The ancients in prosecuting their learning compared different things and traced the analogies between them. The drum has no special relation to any of the musical notes, but without it they cannot be harmonized. Water has no particular relation to any of the five colors, but without it they cannot be displayed. 
Learning has no particular relation to any of the five senses, but without it they cannot be regulated. A teacher has no special relation to the five degrees of mourning, but without his help they cannot be worn as they ought to be. 22. A wise man has said, the great virtue need not be confined to one office, great power of method need not be restricted to the production of one article, great truth need not be limited to the confirmation of oaths, great seasonableness accomplishes all things, and each in its proper time. By examining these four cases, we are taught to direct our aims to what is fundamental. Book 17 Yoki or Record of Music Sect Ioni 1. All the modulations of the voice arise from the mind, and the various affections of the mind are produced by things, external to it. The affections thus produced are manifested in the sounds that are uttered. Changes are produced by the way in which those sounds respond to one another, and those changes constitute what we call the modulations of the voice. The combination of those modulated sounds, so as to give pleasure, and the Direction in harmony with themoft, shield sandaxes two and doft heplums and doxdales constitute us what we call music. 2. Music is, thus, the production of the modulations of the voice, and its sources in the affections of the mind as it is influenced by, external, things. When themand is moved to a sorrow the sound is harp and fading away, when itis moved to pleasure the sound is slow and gentle, when it is moved to joy, the sound is exclamatory and soon disappears, when it is moved to anger, the sound is coarse and fierce, when it is moved to reverence, the sound is straightforward, with an indication of humility, when it is moved to love, the sound is harmonious and soft. These six peculiarities of sound are not natural, they indicate the impressions produced by, external, things. On thy's account the ancient kings wear watch fuel in regard to the things by which theme and ways affected. 3. And so, they instituted, ceremonies to direct men's aims aright, music to give harmony to their voices, laws to unify their conduct, and punishments to guard against their tendencies to evil. The end to which ceremonies, music, punishments, and laws conduct is one, they are the instruments by which the minds of the people are assimilated, and good order in government is made to appear. 4. All modulations of the voice spring from the minds of men. When the feelings are moved within, they are manifested in the sounds of the voice, and when those sounds are combined so as to form compositions, we have what are called airs. Hence the airs of an age of good order indicate composure and enjoyment. The airs of an age of disorder indicate dissatisfaction and anger, and its government is perversely bad. The airs of a state going to ruin are expressive of sorrow and, troubled, thought. There is an interaction between toward sand airs, oft he people, and the character of their government. 5. The note, Kong represents the ruler, Shang, the ministers, Kio, the people, Key, affairs, and you, things. If there be no disorder or irregularity in these five notes, there will be no one tough harmony in the state. If Kung be irregular, the air, is wild and broken, the Eula of state is haughty. If Shang be irregular, the air, is jerky, the Fice soft thestatir decayed. If Kaya be irregular, the air, expresses anxiety, the people are dissatisfied. If ki be irregular, the air, expresses sorrow, affairs are strained. If you be irregular, the air, is expressive of impending ruin, the resources, of the state, are exhausted. If the five notes are all irregular, and injuriously interfere with one another, they indicate a state of insolent disorder, and the state where F is the case will at a distant day meet with extinction and ruin. 6. The heirs of Kong and Wei were those of an age of disorder, showing that those states were near such an abandoned condition. The heirs near the river Pu, at the Mulberry Forest, were those of a state going to ruin. 
The government, of Wei, was in a state of dissipation, and the people were unsettled, calumniating their superiors, and pursuing their private aims beyond the possibility of restraint. 7. All modulations of sound take their rise from the mind of man, and music is the intercommunication of them in their relations and differences. Hence even beasts know sound but know these modulations and the masses of t common people know the modulations, but they do not know music. Idison lie the superior manhukin, really, no music. 8. On this account we must discriminate sounds in order to know the airs, the airs in order to know the music, and the music in order to know, the character of, the government. Having attained to this, we are fully provided with the methods of good order. Hence with him who does not know the sounds we cannot speak about the airs, and with him who does not know the airs we cannot speak about the music. The technology of music leads to us until springs the tenderly ethereal soft ceremony. Huho has apprehended both ceremonious and music may be pronounced to be a possessor of virtue. Virtue means realization, in unself. 9. Hence the greatest achievements of music were not in the perfection of the airs, the, efficacy, of the ceremonies and the sacrificial offerings was not in the exquisiteness of the flavors. In the lutes for the king meow the strings were of red, boiled, silk, and the holes were wide apart, one lute began, and, only, three others joined it, there was much melody not brought out. In the ceremonies of the great sacrifices, the dark-colored liquor took precedence, and on the stands were uncooked fish, while the grand sofidna condiments there was much flavor left and developed. 10. Thus we see that the ancient kings, in their institution of ceremonies and music, did not seek how fully they could satisfy the desires of the appetite and of the ears and eyes, but they intended to teach the people to regulate their likings and dislikings, and to bring them back to the normal course of a humanity. 11. It belongs to the nature of man, as from heaven, to be still at his birth. His activity shows itself as he is acted on by external things, and develops the desires incident to his nature. Things come to him more and more, and his knowledge is increased. Then arise the manifestations of liking and disliking. When these are not regulated by anything within, and growing knowledge leads more astray without he cannot come back to himself and his heavenly principles extinguished. 12. Now there is no end of the things by which man is affected, and when his likings and dislikings are not subject to regulation, from within, hi shanched into the nature of things as they come before him, that is hestiflis the voice of heavenly principally within, and gives the utmost indulgence to the desires by which men may be possessed. On this we have the rebellious and deceitful heart, with licentious and violent disorder. The strong press upon the weak the many are cruel to the few, the knowing impose upon the dull, the bold make it bitter for the timid, the diseased are not nursed, the old and young, orphans and solitaries are neglected. Such is the great disorder Thetensus. 13. Therefore the ancient kings, when they instituted their ceremonies and music, regulated them by consideration of the requirements of humanity. By the sackcloth worn for parents, the wailings, and the weepings, they defined the terms of the mourning rites. By the bells, drums, shields, and axes, they introduced harmony into their seasons of rest and enjoyment. By marriage, capping, and the assumption of the hairpin, they maintained the separation that should exist between male and female. By the archery gatherings in the districts, and the feastings at the meetings of princes, they provided for the correct maintenance of friendly intercourse. 14. Ceremonies afforded the defined expression for the affections of the people's minds, music secured the harmonious utterance of their voices, the laws of government were designed to promote the performance of the ceremonies and music, and punishments, to guard against the violation of them. When ceremonies, music, laws and punishments had everywhere full course, 
without irregularity or collision the method of King Lyria Lewis complete. 15. Similarity and union are the aim of music, difference and distinction, that of ceremony. From union comes mutual affection, from difference, mutual respect. Where music prevails, we find a weak coalescence, where ceremony prevails, a tendency to separation. Itis Thebasina Sof Tetuato Blend People's Feeling Sanjaviligansito Thyrid Word Manifestations 16. Through the perception of right produced by ceremony, came the degrees of the noble and the mean, through the union of culture arising from music, harmony between high and low. By the exhibition of what was to be liked and what was to be disliked, a distinction was made between the worthy and unworthy. When violence was prevented by punishments, and the worthy were raised to rank, the operation of government was made impartial. Then came benevolence in the love, of the people, and righteousness in the correction, of thyrers, and in these way good government held discourse. 17. Music comes from within, and ceremonies from without. Music, coming from within, produces the stillness, of the mind, ceremonies, coming from without, produce the elegancies, of manner. The highest style of music is sure to be distinguished by its ease, the highest style of elegance by its undemonstrativeness. 18. Let music attain its full results, and there would be no dissatisfactions, in the mind, let ceremony do so, and there would be no quarrels. When bowings and courtesies marked the government of the kingdom, there would be what might be described as music and ceremony indeed. Violent oppression oft he people would not arise, the princess would appear submissively at court as guests, there would be no occasion for the weapons of war, and no employment of the five punishments, the common people would have no distresses, and the son of heaven no need to be angry. Such a state of things would be an universal music. When the Son of Heaven could secure affection between father and son, could illustrate the orderly relation between old and young, and make mutual respect prevail within the forces then indeed would ceremony, be seen, as power. 19. In music of tegrandest style a theorist the same harmony that travails between heaven and earth. In ceremonious of tegrandest form there is the same graduation that exists between heaven and earth. Through the harmony, things do not fail, to fulfill their ends, through the graduation we have the sacrifices to heaven and those to earth. In the visible sphere there are ceremonies and music, in the invisible the spiritual agencies. These are things being so in now within the forces there must be mutual respect and love. 20. The occasions and forms of ceremonies are different, but it is the same feeling of respect, which they express. The styles of musical pieces are different, but it is the same feeling of love, which they promote. The essential nature of ceremonies and music being the same the intelligent kings, only after another continued the mass they found them. The occasions and forms were according to them as when they were made. Thenamis agreed with Themarit Hwik they commemorated. 21. Hence the bell, the drum, the flute, and the sounding stone, the plume, the fife, the shield, and the axe are the instruments of music, the curvings and stretchings, of the body, the bending down and lifting up, of the head, and the evolutions and numbers, of the performers, with the slowness or rapidity, of their movements, are its elegant accompaniments. The dishes, round and square, the stands, the standing dishes, the prescribed rules and their elegant variations, are the instruments of ceremonies, the ascending and descending the position shy and loath wheelings about and the change in jephrobes erythire elegant accompaniments. 22. Therefore they who knew the essential nature of ceremonies and music could frame them, and they who had learned their elegant accompaniments could hand them down. The framers may be pronounced sage, the transmitters, intelligent. Intelligence and sage who dareth their name as for transmitting and inventing. 23. Music is, 
an echo of, the harmony between heaven and earth, ceremonies reflect the orderly distinctions, in the operations of, heaven and earth. From that harmony all things receive their being, to those orderly distinctions they owe the differences between them. Musicase its origin from Eaven, ceremonies take their form from the appearance of earth. If the imitation of those appearances were carried to excess, confusion, of ceremonies, would appear, if the framing of music were carried to excess, it would be too vehement. Let there be an intelligent understanding of the nature and interaction of, heaven and earth, and there will be the ability to practice well both ceremonious and music. 24. The blending together without any mutual injuriousness of the sentiments and the airs on the different instruments, forms the essence of music, and the exhilaration of joy and the glow of affection are its business. Exactitude and correctness, without any inflection or deviation, form the substance of ceremonies, while gravity, respectfulness, and a humble consideration are the rules for their discharge. 25. Asto the employment of instruments of metal and stone in connection with these ceremonies and this music, the manifestation of them by the voice and its modulations, the use of them in the ancestral temple, and at the altars to the spirits of the land and grain, and in sacrificing to, the spirits of, the hills and streams, and to the general spiritual agencies, in nature, these are, external demonstrations, natural event of the people. 26. Wenth, ancient, King Shade accomplished thy undertakings they made a their music, to commemorate them, when they had established their government, they framed their ceremonies. The excellence of their music was according to the greatness of their undertakings, and the completeness of their ceremonies was according to the comprehensiveness of their government. The dances with shield sandaxis did not belong to the most excellent music nor did the sacrifice us with cooked flesh mar the highest ceremonies. 27. The times of the five tis were different, and therefore they did not each adopt the music of his predecessor. The three kings belonged to differentages and so they did not each follow the ceremonies of his predecessor. Music carried to an extreme degree leads to sorrow and coarseness in ceremonies indicates something one-sided. To make the grandest music, which should bring with it no element of sorrow, and frame the completest ceremonies which yet should show no one-sidedness, could be the work only of the great sage. 28. There are heaven above ye and earth below and between he meretis various, beings with their different, natures and qualities. In accordance with this proceeded the framing of ceremonies. The influences of, heaven and earth flow forth and never cease, and by their united action, the phenomena of, production and change ensue. In accordance with this music arose. The processes of growth in spring, and of maturing in summer, suggest the idea of, benevolence, those of ingathering in autumn and of storing in winter suggest righteousness. Benevolences akin to music and righteousness to ceremonies. 29. Harmony is the thing principally sought in music. It therein follows heaven, and manifests the spirit-like expansive influence characteristic of it. Normal distinction is the thing aimed at in ceremonies they therein follow earth, and exhibit the spirit-like retr active influence characteristic of it. Hence the sages made music in response to heaven and framed ceremonies in correspondence with earth. In the wisdom and completeness of their ceremonies and music we see the directing power of heaven and earth. 30. The relation, between ruler and minister was determined from a consideration of heaven, conceived of as, honorable, and earth, conceived of as, mean. The positions of noble and mean were fixed with a reference to the heights and depths displayed by the surface of the earth. The regularity with which movement and repose follow each other, in the course of nature, led to the consideration of Fafersis Maland Great. The different quarters, oft he heavens, air grouped togather and thethings, oft he earth, 
are distinguished by their separate characteristics, and this gave rise to, the conception of, natures and their attributes and functions. In heaven there are formed its visible signs, and earth produces its, endless variety of, things, and thus it was that ceremonies were framed after the distinction between heaven and earth. 31. Thebreth, a influence, a fear that sends sun high and that off heaven descends below. These in their repressive and decpansive powers come into mutual contact, and heaven and earth act on each other. The susceptibilities of nature, are roused by the thunder, excited by the wind and rain, moved by the four seasons, and warmed by the sun and moon, and all the processes of change and growth vigorously proceed. Thu sitwast hat musiquas frame to indicatethi harmonious action off heaven and earth. 32. If these processes took place out of season, there would be no, vigorous, life, and if no distinction were observed between males and families disorder would erase and grow. Sukas the reefed, different quality is off, heaven and earth. 33. When we think of ceremonious and music how the reacto the height of heaven and embrace the earth, how the reanthem the phenomena of retrogression and expansion, and a communication with the spirit-like, operations of nature, we must pronounce their rate he highest their reach the farthest their depth the most profound and their breadth the greatest. 34. Music appeared in the grand beginning, of all things, and ceremonies had their place on the completion of them. Their manifestation, being ceaseless, gives, the idea of, heaven, and again, being motionless, gives, the idea of, earth. Through the movement and repose, off thy interaction, come all things between heaven and earth. Hence the sage simply spoke of ceremonious and music. See the introductor in it is vol. XXVII pages. There was a pantomimic exhibition of scenes of war, in which the performers brandished shields and axes, and another of scenes of peace in which they waved plumes and ox tails. What I have rendered by the modulations of the voice is in the text the one Chinese character yin, number number number, for which Callery gives air musical, and which Kong Suan explains as meaning the five full notes of the scale. See the long note of Callery prefixed to this record, concluding. La musique chinoise, telle que l'ont entendue ancients, of eight two lay characteries de un representation theatral ayant pour but de parler tout à la foi auxiliary u, auxiliary oriles, à l'esprit, a tocure. Or, are not the nature, that is, the voice does not naturally, when the mind is not moved, from without itself, give such peculiar expressions of feeling. What belongs to man by his nature is simply the faculty of articulate speech slumbering until he is awakened by his sensations and perceptions. On those see notes see Chinese a classics vol. 3 page 48. See Confucian Analex 15,10,6. This place was in the state of Wei. See the ridiculous incident which gave rise to this account of the heirs in Shimakian's monograph on music pages 13,14. Virtue, number 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 and getting or realizing, number number number, have the same name or pronunciation, te, in Chinese. This concluding sentence, as Callery points out, is only a sort of pun on that common name. And yet virtue is the realization in oneself of what is good. The next paragraph expands the writer's thought. The greatest achievement of musician its ancient perfection ways the softening Andre finding oft he character and that oft he serve a sea soft he temply was the making men reverent filial and brotherly. With this paragraph ends the first portion of the treatise on music, called Yopan, number number, or fundamental principles in music. The Qian Lung editors divide it into four chapters. The first setting forth that music takes its character as good or bad from the mind of man, as affected by what is external to it, the second, 
that the character of the external things affecting the mind is determined by government as good or bad, the third, that the ceremonies and music of the ancient kings were designed to regulate the minds of men in their likings and dislikings, and the fourth, that that regulation was in harmony with the will of heaven, as indicated in the nature of man. The five punishments were branding on the forehead, cutting off the nose, other various dismemberments, castration, and death, see Mayer's Chinese Reader's Manual, page 313. But the one-word punishment would sufficiently express the writer's meaning. The eleven paragraphs ending with this form the second chapter of the book, called by Lu Xiang Yolun, number number number, while the third chapter, extending to the end of the section, is called Yoli, number number number, as if the two were an expansion of the statement in the seventh paragraph that muses is the intercommunication of temodulated sound sand theme and in the relation sand differences. As being, I suppose, commemorative of the achievements of war, and not the victories of peace, and as marking a progress of society and a departure from the primitive irreo finiscent simplicity and reverence. On the first of these two paragraphs, p. Callery says. The celebrated encyclopedist, Ma Tuan Lin, Book 181, says that this passage is one oft most marvelous that ever were written, and he draws from it the proof that the work could not have been written later than the Han, because reckoning from that dynasty there did not appear any author capable of conceiving ideas so profound, and expressing them in language so elevated. p. Callery adds, as regards the origin of the Li Qi, the reasoning of the encyclopedist appears to me passably, passablement, false, as to the intrinsic worth of the passage, I leave it to the reader to form his judgment from the translation which he having devoured Torinder as faithful as possible. In the passage of Ma Tuan Lin, however, that author is simply quoting the words of Ku Shi, Ta Quan, Book 37 and expresses Nupinyan of Fison. Section I 1. Anciently, Shun made the lute with five strings, and used it in singing the Nanfang. Kui was the first who composed, the pieces of, music to be employed by the feudal lords as an expression of, the royal, approbation of them. 2. Thus the employment of music by the Son of Heaven was intended to reward the most virtuous among the feudal lords. When their virtue was very great, and their instructions were honored, and all the cereals ripened in their season, then they were rewarded by, being permitted, the use of the music. Hence, those of them whose toils in the government of the people were conspicuous, had their rows of pantomimes extended far and those of them who bad been indifferent to the government of the people had those rows made short. On seeing their pantomimes, one knew what was, the degree of, their virtue, just as, on hearing their posthumous designations, we know what had been, the character of, their conduct. 3. The Takong expressed the brilliance, of its author's virtue, the Xian Qi, the completeness, of its author's, the Shao showed how, its author, continued, the virtue of his predecessor, the Sha, the greatness, of its author's virtue, the music of fine and calm braced of admirable quality. 4. In the interaction of heaven and earth, if cold and heat do not come at the proper seasons, illnesses arise, among the people, if wind and rain do not come in their due proportions, famine ensues. The instructions, of their superiors, are the people's cold and heat, if they are not what the time requires, an injury is done to society. The affairs, of their superiors, are the people's wind and rain, if they are not properly regulated, they have no success. In accordance with this, the object of the ancient kings in their practice of music was to bring their government into harmony with those laws, of heaven and earth. If it was good, then the conduct, oft he people, was like the virtue, oft their superiors. 5. The feast on, grain-fed animals, with the adjunct of drinking, 
was not intended to produce evil, and yet cases of litigation are more numerous in consequence of it. It is the excessive drinking which produces the evil. Therefore the former kings framed the rules to regulate the drinking. Where there is, but, one presentation of the cup, at one time, guest and host may bow to each other a hundred times, and drink together all the day without getting drunk. This was the way in which those kings provided against evil consequences. Such feasts served for the enjoyment of the parties at them. The music was intended to illustrate a virtue, thesory money a story strain excess. 6. Hence the former kings, on occasions of great sorrow, had their rules according to which they expressed their grief, and on occasions of great happiness, they had their rules by which they expressed their pleasure. The manifestations, whether of grief or joy, were all bounded by the limits of these rules. 7. In music the sages found pleasure, and, saw that, it could be used to make the hearts of the people good. Because of the deep influence which it exerts on a man, and the change which it produces in manners and customs, the ancient king say point he did a son off to subject so instruction. 8. Now, in the nature of men there are both the energy of their physical powers and the intelligence of the mind, but for their, affections of, grief, pleasure, joy and anger there are no invariable rules. They are moved according to the external objects which excite them, and then there ensues the manifestation oft he various faculty is oft emmed. 9. Audiobook generated by, Read with the Ears.